the last uh, job I did for the mining company uh, was at uh, a little place called Burraga, about 50 miles south of Bathurst in central western New South Wales. Uh, Burraga was the site of the old Lloyd Copper Mine, uh, which in the late 1800s and early 1900s had actually produced a lot of copper. Uh, by the time I went to work there, which was 1948, I think it had been the second biggest producer of copper in New South Wales. And I was set down to do what I'd been doing up to this point, um, uh, looking at the old mine records, reconstructing the old mine uh, from, from records. Generally, they were inaccessible. Um, and then doing the surface mapping at a scale of 30 feet to the inch. I'd do a closed theodolite traverse first, uh, then using a plain table and alidade, map at 30 feet to the inch, and try to join up what I've reconstructed of the mine geology with the surface, uh, then predicting perhaps repetitions or extensions of the ore body and then advising on drilling. And um, I, I was becoming more and more unsettled um, by this. I, I felt that in mapping at this very small scale, one really wasn't seeing the wood for the trees. And, um, I was, um, as I say, becoming unsettled uh, by it. I felt that I really wasn't getting anywhere. And um, uh, I used to travel up to Bathurst occasionally by bus. And uh, when I'd done a couple of trips, I began to think, well, I began to notice as we travelled along, every now and again, uh, bes beside the road or at some little distance from the road, I'd see an indication of an old mine working, a little old poppet head or a mine heap or even sometimes a little slag dump. Um, I began to notice these and after a while I began to think, I'm sure the rocks near that little mine are just like the rocks around the last little mine. And uh, this was in towards the end of 1948, and I began to think to myself, I wonder if there's a broad pattern uh, to these things. I've been mapping on this very fine scale, and I thought to myself, I wonder if the thing to do is to first of all look at mineralization uh, on a broad, perhaps almost a regional scale, and then work down from that. Anyway, at about this time, I was offered the position back at Sydney University, so I thought I'll take this up as, um, as, uh, as a research project, which I did. And I mapped round about 600, somewhere between six and 700 square miles, and just mechanically plotted in the positions of all these little sulphide occurrences. They were mainly copper. Some of them were lead zinc, and I found that indeed there was a regional pattern of ore occurrence. That all the ore bodies um, occurred on one, the, the um, it, it was a, vol, a, vol, um, um, a volcanic sedimentary succession there, and I found that all of about 40 little ore occurrences all of them occurred on one or other of two horizons. These were always associated with volcanism, and within these horizons, they always occurred in areas of limestone occurrence, never in limestone, but always in areas of limestone occurrence. Uh, this was intriguing. I'd been brought up uh, in a very orthodox way, and if there were ore, it had formed either as a hydrothermal fissure filling or a hydrothermal replacement, and it had been derived at depth from a granite. And I thought that, uh, I assumed that these little ore occurrences were hydrothermal replacements, uh, but the rocks that they had replaced, apparently preferentially, had probably accumulated on the seaward side of little coral banks that had formed round volcanic islands. Uh, but this was interesting. Uh, it was an interesting pattern. 
but by the time I went back to the university, I, I hadn't got any further than that. Well, um, in the following year, in 1949, I went along to a lecture. It was the Clark Memorial Lecture of the Royal Society of New South Wales, and it was given by Dr. W. R. Brown, and the lecture was on metallogenetic epochs and regions in the Commonwealth of Australia. I went along to this. I think most of the audience was probably bored stiff, but I found myself fascinated by it. He introduced this idea, excuse me, of a metallogenetic region, an area perhaps several hundred miles long and perhaps a hundred or so miles wide. And I thought, well, how interesting. I wonder if what I've been working on between Bathurst and Burriga is one of these metallogenetic regions. But I've been looking at it in more detail. 